Okay. So the candle, it is just continually burning this flame. You know, you kind of blow on it a few times and it goes out and it comes right back on. It doesn't go out completely to where it, you know, kind of uh, smolders and smokes. Yeah, is there any gold left or anything on these skeletons? Uh, there is not. But inside one of the, inside one of the sarcophagi, there is a potion. And the, I believe somebody was checking that already. Yeah, the potion, the liquid is has a has a slight red tinge to it. Not like the the red fluid that's in the fountain in the other room, but it's sort of like a really light uh, a really light uh, red tinge. Now give me an arcana check for that. Gretch, as you're kind of looking this over, give me uh, an arcana check. This is a potion of fire resistance. Hey, does anybody need a potion of fire resistance? I'm already resistant to it, so... I just found this one laying in this old sarcophagi, sarcophagi over here. I mean, I guess we could just keep it until we get to a position where we might need it. You know? We could put that in group loot. Yeah. All right. We will put it in the, the group loot. You guys have a couple things now starting to build up in the group loot, which is, uh, which is good. All right, this candle. What are you doing with the candle there, Barlin? I mean, you can pick it up and, and look at it and stuff. It doesn't has it doesn't have any kind of designs or or anything. It just looks like a normal candle. But this flame just don't blow it out. Okay. Yeah, well, the flame doesn't go I, out too easy. <laughs> what I'll do is I'm going to take the whistle, put it up to my lips, and blow. Yeah, I'll let you borrow for a minute. Okay. Cautiously. <laughs> All right, so All right, so you blow the whistle and nothing happens. But you did as you as you put the the whistle into your mouth, you did feel a sort of like a little sort of almost like static electricity coming from the from the whistle it's not like it it didn't electrocute you or anything it just kind of gave you the kind of gave you the warning that maybe this thing may, might be magical but when you blew it inside of the room nothing happened all right well we'll have to investigate that further for our next long rest. Oh yeah. Okay, let's take a candle. Let's take the candle as a source of light. Um, I'll let you do a, an arcane check on that candle. Barlin. Right. There's no heat coming from the candle. So you think that's why I'm letting you do this because as you're kind of putting your hand over it, it doesn't have any kind of heat to, you know, as you hold your hand over it. Yeah, so you're thinking that there's probably some type of spell that's cast. The only thing that you can really think of would be something that a wizard could do. Clerics can't do this. Now, I'll let... Gretch come in and help you out with this check. So if you want to do an arcane check as well, Gretch, you guys can kind of work yeah, together would, and figure this out. With my, with my knowledge of that one, I hand it over to, to Gretch and say, here, check this out. This looks arcane. Oh, yeah. Gretch, yeah, that role was great. He's like, oh, yeah, pff, that's continual flame. So that, that candle has a continual flame spell cast on it. What about her knowledge on the, the whistle? 
you can I tell that it's magical they tied together they wouldn't both be on this altar if they weren't tied together in some fashion it's possible maybe maybe not only time will tell but you can deactivate this this candle and it's just a regular candle. It just has continual flame on it. So, it's handy to have it, though. Yeah, it is. If I, I threw mean, it uh, in my it, pack, would it light the pack on fire? No, but there's a possibility well, there's no that heat. it would. Yeah, there's no heat, but there's a chance that it it could be snubbed out. Well, what I'll do is the, I'll pick it up with the hand that I'm holding my shield so I can carry the candle kind of behind my shield as I'm walking around. Give me a okay. little bit of illumination. Sure, you can do that. Since I can't see in the dark. It's about the brightness of a torch, too. And, you know, that's another thing that, you know, like I had mentioned, this is, this is a lot brighter than your normal candle. But yeah, it, it'll it'll dimly light this room. The entire room. Perfect. I don't have to carry my no. torch. No. All right, guys, we're ready to move on. And Garkin, do you need to be healed? Uh, no, I'll take care of it. <clears throat> All right, adventurers. So I thought I had hit uh, major armor before. I don't see it on the sheet, and I keep seeing that one d six damage keeps getting added to it. You hit what now? I thought I put on major armor before when we started, um, but I'm not seeing it there. So I'm gonna hit it again. Uh, just, but I just... keep seeing effects one d six roll. I don't know what's going on with my sheet there. Mister Green Flame Blade. Uh, we'll just, we'll just, there you go. You've got armor on there. I just, yeah, put it yeah I would just, I'm more concerned it, so. about the other stuff because you kept saying I keep getting doubles. So, what that affects is a d6 for your the inspiration that I gave you. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, and that right, would be, cool. uh, you've already, yeah, that's already been consumed, right? That's already been, that's used. what I thought. Yeah, I thought it's been consumed. Yeah. And then the, the, the damage for 1d6 sets for sneak attack. So, yeah, you can just add. Next time you hit, just add it on there, and voila, it'll it'll uh, do the damage. So you're set. You've got your AC on there for Mage Armor now. It's uh, what eight hours or something like that. Yeah, eight hours. Yep, eight okay. hours. Well, Dave, all right, how adventures. Do we want to keep track of this um, this breath weapon. I uh, well, more usage. Yeah, you guys have got about an, another hour left. Uh, and I believe, let's see, Gretsch has got one use. And, and as you guys come back out into the room, the basin is now empty. And that slime is back at the bottom of the basin. Now, as you're moving along there, Elias, in this small little alcove here, it's you know destroyed here on the right-hand side, just a bunch of rubble and stuff where... Uh, over time, the, the wall has just basically just caved in. On the left-hand side, there's a door. And then straight ahead, there are, uh, you can see that there's another chamber. Really, uh, it's a really narrow 10-foot wide chamber. And you can see that there's a bunch of open doors that are protruding into the hallway. You can see three or four doors that are kind of open. And then you can see that this this narrow uh, chamber goes into a like a larger room towards the end, and then it just kind of fades from no, your dark vision. No, I, I didn't have my, my torch. not from dark vision, yeah, but from your torch. Yeah. I don't think it's uh, yeah. the tracks on the floor. Where they? Um, how are they looking? Like, do, do they go to the the door up to the to the west, or do they continue north? 
the tracks look like they continue north. I don't relate to them. It's like my four doors up ahead and trap uh, at the very end. But uh, we could try this door here that's locked. Okay, uh, the, yeah, that, that door is not locked at all. Well, the closed door, I should say. I haven't checked it yet. Yeah, it's not. It's, it doesn't even have a keyhole on it. So oh, okay. it's just a handle that you would open up. But yeah, you, you can definitely check it, though. That's for sure. That would probably uh, be a good idea. Yeah, I'll check this this one to, to the west. I'll check it first. Yeah. Looks clear. You're like, eh, there's no lock on it. All right, I'll grab the... Uh... <laughs> The little spear again and push it open. <laughs> the confidence is fading? Maybe. <laughs> hey. <laughs> five scouts yeah. just popped out at us. Yeah. Well, this is a 20 by 20 chamber, empty again. And of course, there's some. There's more tracks in here. And now it looks like these, these tracks are starting to change. It doesn't look like you can't see the claw marks anymore in these small little humanoid tracks. But they are oh, about so just... of the same size. So it would be a, a similar sized creature, but without without the claws. And some without actually claws. have boots on too. Uh, interesting. All right. Uh, nothing in this room, so I'm going to check the door. Okay. Warren's going to say a prayer for Elias. All right, so as you're, you're looking at the, uh, at the door you see that there is a thin cord that stretched across the base of the door. And you follow the cord up, and then there's a hole towards the top of the door frame. And, you know, with the assistance of your party, you're able to get your mirrors out and all of your other thieves' tools. And, uh, you know, you get your torch up there really close to it. And... Through this hole, you can see that the string goes through and there's another room. You really can't see what's in the room because it's dimly lit. But what you can see is like sort of like the, the edge of a bell that's on the other side of the door. And if you open this door, it's going to activate that bell and alert something or someone. All right, so I'm going to uh, make an effort to... Uh, secure that line, not across the door, but somewhere else, so it doesn't. Sure, you can. <laughs> really yeah, sure. You you could definitely. Uh, you can deactivate it. You can deactivate it just by basically taking another python, cutting the cable, and you know embedding the python in there and wrapping the uh, cord around the python. That way, the bell won't alarm anything on the other side of this door. But yeah, nice, nice roll there. Yurosh, thanks so much, man. Thank you so much, man. Oh, all my pythons. Oh, the life of a dungeon, yeah. No, I exactly deleted nine to zero. Anyways, I'll uh, I'll open the door. Ouch! Oops. I go through. Yeah, there's an error. I should have put it um, so, so good luck. Door. Yeah, let's uh, see let's see if uh, you deactivate this thing. You're gonna try to deactivate it, right? Yeah. yeah. So thieves will no. Yeah, thieves will roll. Yep. Yep. Let's see what happens. Good luck. Ooh, your finger slips 
Elias, but you're able to catch the cord before it falls into the other room. Oh yeah, you're you're sweating uh, bullets, man. Meant to do that, you know. Very close roll on that. But you get the you get the you know you very lightly tap the python into the the wall where it doesn't make any noise, and you've deactivated the trap. All right, Elias wants to inspire Garkon. He steps up, puts his hands on his shoulder, and says, "Blessings of Agma to you, holy warrior." Thank you, friend. Yeah, thank I see you. what's on the other side. Mm. Looks like you're you're opening up the door, Elias. Yep. All right. So as you open up the door, you you oh, being a uh, a rogue and you know you love to have little uh, tricks and trinkets and and little things that you can use to your advantage and this entire 20 foot hall 10 foot wide is strewn with call drops i mean there oh, are there were tons of them everywhere yeah they're they're no they're not spiders or they're cow drops and you know that these damn things hurt like hell <laughs> Now like on the northern Lego on the floor. Yeah. yeah, there there are tons. There there is a bunch of them in here. Now as you open the door, also there is a, a wall where this, you know, where you see the four little blocks here. Well, this is like a like a half wall. Sort of like where something can uh, have cover on you, which is oh. kind of funny. Because there are there are two goblins that are on the other side of this wall. And as you open up the door, they're they're you know, they're basically standing there talking with one another. And as they see the door open, they kinda look over and then they look at each other and they're goblins and they go, Uh oh and they draw their bows on you. So you caught them by surprise. So why don't you guys give me a... Uh, I'll give you guys a, an entire round of surprise. So you'll be att attacking with advantage. And these guys are drawing their bows. So, But you know the Caltrops, these things hurt like hell. And like I said, this is a 10-foot wide hall, 20-foot long, and you guys have advantage. So we'll just start at the top and Barlin... Uh, no, actually, let's see in that you open up the door, Elias. I'm going to let you go first. So, Elias, what are you going to do as you see these two goblins? They're startled, uh, you know, deer in the headlights, or goblins in the headlight, and they're drawing their bows on you. What do you do? And you can move across these caltrops, which would be, uh, I believe they have a mechanic to where any creature that you, if you enter the area, you're going to have to do a DC 15 deck saving throw. Uh, you'll take piercing if you, and then you'll have to stop moving. Now, let's see. If you want to move gingerly through there and, you know, tiptoe it, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, something like that, oh, really? you, you, you can move through it, sort of like walking on hot coals, you know, and it'll basically cost you double movement. So if you've got thirty yeah, feet, no. then you can only move thir You can only move fifteen. So that's uh, how we'll do the. That's how we'll do the call do trap. I know we have we have range attacks, right? But my party has some range attacks. I only have a dagger, so I will pull out a dagger, throw it to Goblin One, and move out of the way to let my. Okay. Let's um, see what the. Range. Yeah, let's see what the range is on that. I think the dagger is, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's twenty foot. It is 20. So if you want to move in and gingerly move in for 10 feet, throw it so you don't get disadvantage, and then move back out for you know 20 feet and then move to the side so someone else can get into the doorway, you could do that if you wanted to. All right, we'll do that. We'll slide in there. Okay, all right. I'm going to make a dex. 
No, no. If you're if you're gingerly moving in, you know, it's kind of tippy toeing yeah, it. Just, then just yeah, slide in. no dex, no, no okay. dex saving throw at all. Now just go ahead slide. and do your yeah your ranged attack with your little with dagger, your dagger. Will fly out to goblin number one right as it there. spins hilt over end, spinning towards the goblin. Ooh, and it lands right dead center in its chest. Nice hit. Roll damage. As you hit the goblin for a total of five damage, and he's very badly wounded, as as you can see, you you've struck like a major artery, and, and blood is actually kind of spewing out onto the other goblin. Okay, let's let's uh, go to uh, and you you can move well, out too. Yeah, so with that, I'll slide to. over here, give them a rundown of what's in there. Um, you know the caltrops and all that, and just to hit him with range. Sure. Garkin, you're up. Do you want to do anything? Do you have any range attack? Maybe a crossbow or anything like that? Yep. I'm going to move into the room and start working my way gen- gingerly across. Okay, I'll sounds part, good. Part way and then fire a javelin. All right, so you'll it's be like, able to get... You said 15 feet. Yeah, your first step will be 5, and then that would be like uh, 15 feet and then like 20 feet, depending on what, what square you wanted to be in on the, the left or the right, so... So do you want to be on the left or yep. do you want to be on the right? Uh, I'll move into the left there. Okay, there and you go. Fire the javelin at one. Oh, nice! I love the javelin. You can hit the same one that uh, Elias just hit, the one on the left, or no, he hit the one on the right. I'm sorry. Yeah, goblin one. Well, I'm gonna fire at the same one. Ooh, your javelin misses as it streaks right by the goblin, almost hitting the wall on the other side. Because now that you guys are, are starting to come in, you can see that this is a a small little sort of like cubby hole. And then uh, they're kind of behind a wall. So I should have probably given them some cover bonus, but I will from now on uh, because they are behind that wall. So let's go next to... Uh, let's see. Closest one is Barlin. So, what do you want to do, Barlin? Well, Barlin's going to move up maximum. I guess it'd be right next to Garkon, and then he's going to cast uh, vicious mockery on Goblin Number Two. All right. So, the first one that rolls a critical fumble for tonight, Summer McMack, has bought you a a spin on the critical fumble table. She bought the perk for you called Yank It Real Good. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Nice. So you can thank Summer if you roll a one. All right, let's see. Failed saving throw? So so now I can roll my damage only when he attacks at disadvantage. Yep, sounds good. And see, there's it was a saving throw. There's really no negative modifier, so... Very nice. Correct. Let's go to uh, Gretch. What would you like to do, Gretch? I'm going to move up to the door. And I'm going to fire a fire firebolt at goblin number two. Okay. Give me a, a total of minus four because of your two party members in the way and also the cover that the goblins have. So a minus four on your roll. But you have, uh, you, you remember, you guys have inspirations. And Elias, you have a, a free reroll too. Yeah, how do I do the minus four? Uh, in the bottom left hand corner in the modifier box, just hit minus four. And it'll automatically subtract that from your gotcha. roll. Fantasy Grounds is beautiful, man. Ooh, that's a bad miss. Roll a negative one. one. Wow. Yeah, that's 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 a really bad miss. I think that's probably your worst roll yet, Gretch. I, I think so. So I'm going to move out of my way. I'm going to call that a turn. All right. So everybody, go ahead and roll initiative now. <laughs> Garkin, you've got initiative rolls like me, man. <laughs> All right, so it looks like we've got for round number one, 
Looks like the goblins have actually got the initiative. All right, so the first goblin, it is the wounded one on the right-hand side. It is going to attack Barlin with a short bow. And it shoots. And it misses. The next goblin, he's uh, lightly wounded. He's got a short bow as well. He will t attack Garkin. So he lets his arrow fly. Holy cow. That, that should have been a disadvantage. Was not a, a good thing. So did he... Uh, what did he have? Didn't he have a vicious mockery, right? Correct. So I'm wondering why it did not... Uh, do you have a pendant for vicious mockery that grants disadvantage or... I think I don't there, have there, a should, there should be some kind of there's a in there, think, there's right? a cast should be there's a cast on the damage um pendant okay is it well, is it the little sword to the left of the where it says vicious mockery let's see yeah it doesn't look like there's a an effect it just has the the save saving and the also damage. The, the damage. So yeah, let's see. All right, so it'll have a disadvantage on the next attack roll before the end of its next turn. So let me uh, roll another attack, and we'll see uh, what happens. Whoops. Let me pick up the actual attack off the character sheet and not the twenty sided. Okay, so an 18 is going to be a miss. So you are lucky with the, the vicious mockery, because that probably would have hurt. That would have been a 2d6 roll. So. Nice work. Yeah, nice job with vicious mockery. We'll have to add a pendant on that. So uh, I'll write it down, you write it down, and remind me if I, if I forget. But we'll, we'll make a pendant for that. We'll do. All right. So Barlin, you're up now. Well, I'm going to cast Vicious Mockery again on Goblin number two. Okay. I wish I had a pen that wrote. I'm out of pens that actually fucking work. <laughs> nice and damage, gonna, though. It takes and four. And then I'm going to move up. Four. But right there. Putting my shield between me and the goblin. All right, I've got the uh, that on my sheet of notes. Elias, what say you? As your your companions are charging into the Caltrop field, and these things aren't—they're not all attached right. to the floor, so it looks like you could probably you could probably jack all those things up if you wanted to. I will if you took the you. time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, might later. <laughs> good, good job for job but later. Here's a uh, indeed. <laughs> so I'm gonna, use, I'm gonna use a bonus action to dash into the room. Ooh, okay. Uh, oh. And then move and attack. Okay. Now that you know everyone right. took a turn, everyone did their attacks <laughs> and all that. And that so. so give me a dexterity saving throw as you're barreling in, dashing into the room. Are you yeah. are you gonna do the dash gingerly? Is it going to be a ginger dash, or is it just going to be no, a standard dash? No, it's not dash? going to be a ginger dash. It's going to be a very acrobatic dash. Very I mean, nice. Uh, I like it. The wall as much as I can. Uh, All right. So it'll be a little cinematic. But it's a it, soulless dash. I can actually do the I can do the saving throw for you if you want. Uh, what would I do? Just, uh, just grab the dex. Save. Oh, never mind. Uh, well, I'll let, if you want to roll, you can, but I, I can do it for you. But... It's right, you. you just did it, didn't you? No, I, I, I was testing it out, so. Oh, you can go ahead, okay. Yeah, just so go I'm to your character just sheet on the, here on the main and tab. Yeah. And go. Very nice. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you did do that. So, But you're able to uh, maneuver your way acrobatically, doing all kinds of somersaults and tumbles and all that stuff. You, you don't get any caught in you. No, so I'll come up right here with the rapier and hit uh, number two right here. All right. So bonus actions down. Your attack with the rapier. You swing at the goblin as he as his eyes uh, widen and get big. 
And again, He's like, you use um, oh shit, green flame blades. Okay, oh, very good. And don't forget, you got to reroll if you uh, if you miss. Yep, and sneak attack. Yeah. Compliments of B knock. But that's a hit. Sweet, so he's gonna get. The He'll get sneak attack too. Right here, right here. All right, so the goblin, you basically just you gut him. His intestines they they just start falling out all over the place onto the floor. He's trying to put him back in, and then he just goes ah and falls over dead. Pfft. Go ahead and, and splash that other damage. Uh, yep, a little flame, green flame will dance over to his buddy. Very nice. All right, so pass it on, and we'll go to Garkin. Uh, yeah, we're going to take a little move back. No, uh, no, I'll leave it there because he's almost dead. I don't think they're both dead, aren't they? Mm. I don't think they are. I think one's still alive. Um, yeah, they're, they're actually, both yeah, alive. Actually, yeah, I will move yeah, they, back. They are. So I might... Oh, they are dead? Okay. Mm, yeah. Yeah, so you guys are you guys are out of combat now. All right. Well, so for the rest of the move action, yeah, I guess I'll just jump into this room. Hey, do we so have hurt Elias. my feet? Elias, do you want to get those caltrops or let me have Jot do it? Oh, if, if Jot would be so kind, it would save us a bit of time. <laughs> hey, Jot, would you do me a favor, man? Could you please pick these uh, little caltrops up for me and uh, hand them to me when you're done? Uh, what's in it for me, pal? I'll find something for you. I got something in mind. We'll get back to town. I don't want There's one of those stale it. rations. Those things taste like utter mm -hmm. crap, if you know what I mean. Don't worry. I got some gold for you coming. All right. In a, in a hug now. I said two. <laughs> you guys start to see the the caltrops being picked up off of the floor and put into a sack. So it'll take, I'd say it would probably take about 10, 15 minutes or so, but there is a, like just a, a standard, you know, let's see, there's 20 foot worth of a uh, caltrops. So let's look at the, the items here. All right. And it looks like there's uh you get, five foot so there's there's literally eight packages of caltrops that you can that you can uh, so you'll have like eight uses of caltrops there's that many in this room wow that's that's nice yeah i'll hand them off to elias when i get them back okay so i'll go ahead and and uh, i'll add those right. elias to your sheet and you'll have you'll you'll literally have eight containers of caltrops, so a hundred a hundred and sixty total. You're the rogue. I figured they'd be best fitting for you. And they're they're pretty heavy, but you're fine for encumbrance. So, so that that'll take about that'll take Jod about ten ten to fifteen minutes or so. Now, I'll, when you I'll round the corner, most of them. I'm gonna have a couple like on my belt just to be able to throw them. When, sure. Like, those. Yeah, that's cool. Turn a corner. Guess what? There's a door. And Garkin dun, dun, dun. is leaning right up against it. But in this room, you know, this, you know, as you guys jump over the wall, there's all kinds of filth on the floor. There's all kinds of stains on the walls. There's all kinds of shabby hides, probably sleeping, and because they're apparently on, on some type of guard duty or something like that. There is a, a fire pit that has been used for many, many years. It looks like you know there's a, a bunch of burnt bones, a bunch of pieces of uh, uh, metal, and it's all in the fire pit. But it looks like uh, these these goblins, typical goblins, they, they don't have very good hygiene. And, you know, there's a, a, a dank smell. And then on the eastern side, there is a, uh, there's a door. All right. Well, Archon's going to open the door. Okay. You open the door, and thankfully nothing nothing happens. 
and there's a hall and you can see that there is a sort of like a turn to your right and it's going to be heading east and when you get to the corner garkin you notice that there's a bunch of blunt and barbed arrows that are lying all over the ground on the cobblestone floor that there's some human-sized dummies or they look like dummies that that are basically hung from from the center of the wall and there's a bunch of arrows no well there's uh, okay I'll, I'll rephrase that there are a couple of arrows in the dummy and there are a shit ton of arrows around the dummies <laughs> <laughs> so right. so yeah, it so looks I'm like they've been practicing shooting. And you can see that there's three dummies from where you're at. All right, so I'll edge around the corner here. See if I can okay. get a hint at what's around that corner as well. Okay. So as you as Barlin. you peek around the corner, what's that, Barlin? So Barlin's going to inspire Degretch. Okay. Give him a wink and pull on his ear. Give him, give him I the old appreciate wink. That. <laughs> you peek around the corner and it looks like an archery range for sure. And you see another one of these these uh, small walls like you just encountered. Uh, there are some more goblins in here. Now these goblins are expecting you. And as you peer around the corner, I'm going to give you three quarter cover, which I'm going to give them a minus five to hit. And there are three goblins that are on the other side of this wall. There, but they're on the other side of the wall. They're all going to attack you. They were expecting you. They, they said, oh, there they are. They're in here now. They're in here. And they're saying this in Goblin. So if anybody can hear that, you can understand what they're saying. If you cannot understand Goblin, it's just a bunch of jibber-jabber. So let's do three attacks on you, Garkin, as you peer around the wall. And they're going to be at minus five. All right. So the first Goblin, with its uh, short but hopefully... These things uh, won't hit you. Ah, the, f the first is a horrible miss. The second goblin lets go of the arrow. It is also a miss. And finally, the last goblin fires. And he barely misses. So now let's go ahead and roll initiative for these three goblins here. And as you're kind of looking into the room, as you peer around, you can see that there's a couple more doors. There's one more door over to your immediate uh, left, and then there's two more past this half wall. And these these goblins have uh, cover. So the, uh, let's see, Jot is still picking up these caltrops as you guys are starting to uh, go into the room. So not, much better job on the uh, initiative rolls, guys. Elias, not for me. you hear all the commotion ahead. What say you? I hear the commotion, and I see the uh, three arrows sail right past. Yeah, they uh, hit the corner of the, the hallway there. The corner, so. Yeah. So I'll take a, a bonus action to dash. Uh, so that's 10. That'll be 20. Okay. That'll be 30 right there. And then uh, move and attack. Move right up to him here. And I'll attack Goblin 1 um, with Green Flame. Green Flame Blade. They mumble something to you in a language that uh, you don't yeah, understand. Don't and they're, they're kind of waving their, their little leg choppers and stuff and beating on their chest as you attack them. <laughs> <laughs> nice hit you s vicious strike man 22 versus ac
nice nice hit you kill the you kill the goblin the first goblin goes goes down a little flame will jump at his friend okay and i still have a move a little bit of move so i'm going to take just a step there to be out of the way of the other guy okay barlin what say you Well, Orland's going to try to get around as quick as possible. You heard a blood-curdling scream, a very high-pitched blood-curdling scream as you round the I'll corner take, and see a goblin falling to its knees. There you go. I'll ah. take a full move in, and I'm going to cast Vicious Mockery on goblin number three. Okie dokie. They've not been rolling really good, have they? No. And he has disadvantage well, nice. on this attack. Okay. And that will be for goblin number three. Gotcha. Correct. Anything else for you, Barlin? Nope, I keep wanting to call you as far Barlin. As I can. Well, as long as you give me a drink with it, it's all good. <laughs> right. Garkin, what say you? Well, I'm going to close with goblin two and Take a swing at him with the Warhammer. Nice. Wow, that's a crit. Uh, that is one hell of a crit on Goblin number two as you basically just smash his head in with your Warhammer and Goblin brain and bits of skull just fly everywhere. Mainly get on Elias, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Goblin 2 is dead. Anything else for you? I uh, know, I'm good. <clears throat> All right. Oh, Dag, you're up. Maybe my 30 feet to right there, but I don't think I can get to Goblin 3, can I? Because Garkin's in the way. Possibly. I'll be shooting at disadvantage, won't I? Uh, shooting at disadvantage because of why? Because Garkin's in the way. No, it'll just be a minus two for cover. And you're at a corner, okay. too. You're, you're going to be on the corner, too. So, that, you know, that's... that's could, do you have any other movement that you can move out into the middle of the room to eliminate the, the Unless cover? Unless I... Unless I dashed. Well, we'll, we'll say that you can squeeze into the square where the dummy is. How about that? Sort of. If you got five more feet of movement, you can get down there and, you know. No, I didn't. I moved all 30 feet. Oh, well, actually, did? yeah, I could have. If I, is it, does the diagonal count as five feet? Uh, it does, yeah. Yeah. Okay. In that case, I'm going to fire at Goblin 3. Okay, it'll still be at minus two because of uh, because of uh, Garkin, but at least it's not minus four because of the wall, you know. Right. Nice hit. That was supposed to be on the goblin. <laughs> All right, you take him down because uh, it looks like. As you guys were coming in, it looks like these these goblins were going to be scattering. It looks like they were going to probably make a run for it. But seeing that you guys got in there, you took them out, they weren't able to escape. So you guys are out of combat again. On that, moment, on that note, Dave, I'm going to take, I have Grim Harvest, and uh, I can use that to gain back two health. Killing a sure, creature. yeah, that's right, because, yeah, you get that for being a necromancer. Very nice. Nice. Let's search the uh, goblins in this room and see what we can find. Okay. Yeah, there's a, there's a little bit of, uh, there's a little bit of money. And one of the goblins has a, uh, 
looks like a dwarven made silver flask and you pop the cork on it and it and it smells uh smells of like a very pungent goblin a vile goblin wine i mean it just it it almost smells like ammonia it's that bad but you know it has a a reddish color to it and then another one of the goblins has a key All right, so let's go ahead and take a uh, a ten minute break. I owe you guys some experience, and who wants this? As I let's see, uh, there's a little bit of silver too. There's about a uh, twenty silver between all of the goblins. Uh, who would like to have the the flask with the vile goblin wine? If anybody wants it, it's really not, really not worth anything. And then, who would like to have the, uh, the silver? Well, the, the the silverish metal key. Let's flip the key to Elias. Realize. Yeah, Elias opens most okay. of the doors, so we'll let him have okay. the key. Sounds good. Anybody want the the vile right. putrid uh, goblin wine? Gotta wish sure, Spug was here. I would definitely it. take that. Yeah, I could probably use that at some. All right, there you go. Everybody gets a couple silver. A couple items have been uh, given to you, and I'm not going to identify the key because it it has some significance. So let's go ahead and take a break. I'm going to give you guys your experience points really quick. And how about I see you guys at uh, about 1215, so about eight minutes or so. Is that cool? Sure. <laughs> Which way do you go now that you got your 125 XP? You want to go Check into more goblins or, or the kobolds or the other way? Mm. Lots of choices. Just keep rolling. Just check this other door right here. Elias, let me um, give you a little bonus here. So it looks like you're going to go uh, on on to this first more. door on the left hand side where the the yeah, dummies yeah, are. Yep. Okay. All right. It's a wooden door. It uh, it's definitely locked. You kind of jiggle the handle a little bit. It's definitely locked. Is this key? Uh, is it? Does it have a keyhole? It, it yeah. It it, it definitely does. Yeah. It has a keyhole. All right. I'll try the key. All right, you put the, yeah, that, that metal key in there, click, it unlocks the door. All right, I'll take a key out and open the door and step in. Okay. So as you open up the door, a like a wall of rot just hits you in the face because you see squalor everywhere in this low ceiling room. The ceiling in this oh, room is only door. about 10 foot. <laughs> You see, you see that there's a, a large iron spike before you close the door. You see that there's a large iron spike that's driven on like the uh, the center of the floor, and there's a bunch of manacles that are hanging off of the walls. And uh, you see some kobolds that are imprisoned in this room. There are three of them, uh, as a matter of fact. Guys, no. let's see if we can uh, do something a little different here. My first question is, why are kobolds tied up in this room? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, maybe some subterranean war between the kobolds and the goblins have broken out here. Who knows? Territory disputes. Mm. Oh. But yeah, the squalor everywhere. It smells in here, and there are three kobolds. And they look, they're kind of like scooching back from you guys as you guys are, you know, as uh, old meaty Garkins (laughs) comes in in full armor and a big big warhammer is probably slapping in the palm of his hand. Barlin's going to step in and look at, going to look at the kobolds, and then Draconic, he's going to say, 
what are you doing? Yeah. So these things, they, they tell you that they've been, uh, there were about a dozen of them. They tried to uh, invade the goblin side of the citadel and they were captured. And as you, as you uh, enter the room, also there's a cage on the very western wall. And, you know, you're kind of squinting your eyes and you're like, is that, is that what I think it is? And there is a, in the cage, there's a, a goblin. Not a goblin, but a, a, a gnome, sorry. Gnome, goblin, same thing. I mean, come on. So yeah, there is so, a there's a gnome that's that's in this uh, in this so cage. That cage right there in front of me. There is yeah yeah, it's a male gnome, and he he looks uh like he's he's had a better day. He's, you know he's been beaten up and and all that shit. So let me uh let me go ahead and put him on the map as well. Right, he's down here. He's visible. All right. And he looks dehydrated. Looks like he's been beat up a bunch of times. But the other kobolds, they, they tell you that they've been captured for, for, for days. We've been captured for days. We're hungry. Do you have any food? Do you have any water? They keep Born taking us out one at a time. Barlin turns around to the kobolds and then Draconic, he tells them to shut up. Ooh. And then he turns around to the gnome and in gnomish, he asks this guy, how did you get here? The gnome, he, he tells you, uh, I, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, f uh, I, I was on my way to seek uh, my fortune and I, I, I took the old road and I actually had some pretty bad luck and some goblin bandits. They caught me and I've been here ever since. And, you know, I, 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 my deity, she's, she's kept me healthy. Uh, but otherwise I'm, I'm sure I'd be dead from starvation and abuse if it wasn't for my deity. Oh, God bless her. Who is your deity? Ah, uh, why don't you pick one for me? Uh, we'll just say Morden. We'll go with the default. I can't remember what the the gnome is a uh, plex or so. I don't know. Anyway, uh, we'll we'll just say that uh, it's Morden for the time being. But he says, "Ah, Look. my name is Erky, Erky Timbers, and it's nice to meet ya." Erky, it's lucky that we came along to rescue you. I am hoping it looks like you are my knights in shining armor. Turn around and ask Elias to come in and release Erky Timbers. All right, I'm, I'll stomach the pain, the smell for a bit. Why are all of you in here? And yes, I don't smell anything. <laughs> it's it smelled really bad at first, but oh, I guess I've gotten used to it by now. <laughs> uh, yes, I, yeah. Um, the, the key does not fit these shackles or this cage, I should say. Sure, it does. It, it fits the it fits the the keyhole in the cage. Sure, and and I'll unlock it. Yeah, okay. Erky okay. looks a little weak, so he you know he's he he gets out of the cage and he stretches a little bit. Oh oh, it's it's been weeks since I've been able to stand on my feet. Boy, they they kept me in that cage like I was like I was an animal, like I was some type of dog or kobold or something. No offense over there, Mister Kobolds, but. You get my point. Barlin talks to the kobolds and tries to persuade them and says, if you will follow us, we can help you redeem your name and bring a swift death to the goblins. What do you want from us? Do you want us to help you fight? That's basically what they're saying in, uh, in Draconic. We want to go back. We we attack these. The goblins have stolen our pet dragon. 
and we're trying to get the dragon back. That is why we, we invaded and we were not successful. Pet dragon, you say. Does this dragon have a name? This dragon, it does have a name. And if you weren't so rude to me, I might tell you the, the dragon's name. I could be a lot ruder to you. Okay, okay. Are you speaking in Draconic? Can you speak Draconic? I am. Okay. And yes, I can. All right. So the the kobold says, uh, it's a white dragon wormling, and its name is Calcrix. And we stole them from the goblins. Well, we stole him from the kobolds, actually. We just walked right in, beat them all down, kobolds. and took the... You we, stole we, them from yourself? We, we took the... Uh, we, uh, no, actually, we were looking. God damn it. I'm getting confused here. You guys, I haven't seen people, and you guys are scaring me. You're walking in here. First, I don't know if we're if we're attacking or if we're defending, but yes, we were trying to find Caltrix. He was stolen from us from from the uh, the nasty goblins. Somewhere close, we've heard the roar of Caltrix several times in here. So we with kobolds. Yes, a dragon roar. Well, we and. He just kind of showed up one day, and, and he liked us. So, I mean, of course, we worship Calcrix, and he was in the cage. We had him in the cage, and I, I was in the cage uh, defending, and, and so was our, our dragon trainer master named Meepo. He, uh, he was sleeping. He wasn't feeling too good. But He's not feeling very good now either. What do you, what do you mean? Is this a Charbonne's offspring? What do you... What do you mean he's not feeling too good? Is, is, is Meepo okay? Are you here to save us? We saw him a little while ago. Yeah, we're, here, we're kind of here to save you, yeah. Well, that's, that's great. We need, we need to take these goblin filth out, and we need to get Calcrix back. Lead the way. I don't know. I, I, I don't know where the dragon's at. I, I only know where this prison cell is. I don't know what's outside of these four walls. Hey, Barley, did you just ask him a question? Yeah, I asked him if this Silatrex was the offspring of a Chardelon. I don't think so. No. That was a long time ago. I don't think so. Dragons live a long time. No, that's, that's true. I don't know. I haven't lived that long, so I couldn't tell you. Maybe our boss tell you. You strail. Maybe she tell you. She's Barnum our leader. raises his hand axe and slams it down towards the Whoa! Cobalt. Whoa! Whoa! And easy! Cuts his shackles off his arms. Oh, oh, boy, you really scared me there, mister. Oh. Ooh, nice burp. <laughs> As oh, I said, uh, lead the way. So, have 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 you spoke to Eustrail yet? Is is has Eustrail sent you to us to find us her favorite kobolds in all of the litter? Maybe. No, we're here. No. Have you seen humans? Have you seen any humans? Uh. For the last I, thirty days. I I think a couple of weeks ago there were. Yes, there was, there was. There were some humans that were going to attack the goblins. And they made some kind of deal with the boss lady. And they said that they would come back and they never did. So I guess, I guess all of the goblins, I guess they killed them. That's the only thing I can think of. Well, we need you to show us the way to the goblins so we can kill them all. I can take you to use trail. I have no use for it. Goblin, kobold leader. I want the goblin. Eustrel, powerful. Eustrel, mighty. Eustrel probably give you big bits of gold and chunks of gold to find Caltrix. That's what I would think. She's got lots of. She's got lots of treasure. And then the other kobold hits him. Like, what are you telling that for? <laughs> Barlin turns over to Iki Tempers and says, "What do you know of this kobold leader?" Let's see. There is some lore that 
you do get from from this irky timbers. Uh, when Barlin says that, is uh, Garcon's going to say that? Uh, I can't remember the name, and you just said it. 